Hello, it's Tom Donald from the London Contemporary School of Piano. Today we're going to talk about 251 shapes. Shapes of 251 that work exceptionally well for your jazz practice and your jazz chord progression playing. And you may have heard me talk about on previous videos how important it is to think of uh, jazz piano, particularly jazz harmony, as a shape driven construct not as just a purely theoretical driven construct because if you think of it just as theory your head's not going to keep up with your fingers and you really want your fingers to be ahead in the game here because we are talking about a style of music that involves quick decisions improvisation uh, and you really want to feel the shapes in your instrument and you want to train your fingers no different to a football player that's about to kick a goal in the middle of a world cup are they going to think about the theory behind kicking that goal or are they going to kick the goal first and maybe analyze what it was they were doing before and after the match and that's it's really no different from sports in that sense you know this is the sport of playing jazz piano is that you really want to train your fingers to feel these shapes and 251 is obviously you know one of the most important progressions or one of the most commonly used progressions that we speak about in jazz piano so let's break it down into a few convenient shapes and if you're struggling with your jazz piano theory and you really want to get a bit more clearer on your chords there's a really important resource you need and it's the holy trinity of jazz chords it's a special document i've put together that really addresses the three different types of chords in jazz piano and uh, if you'd like to access this material just head on over to our website contemporaryschoolofpiano.com and we'll send you a copy of the holy trinity of jazz chords with our compliments so now let's have a look at some different shapes and start exploring some finger shapes we can use in our plane and um so a two five one for instance in the key of c major would be a d minor seven to a g seven to a c major seven and i'm using a very conservative straightforward shape there in the right hand i've got the chord i've got the d minor seven and i'm just dropping the top two notes for the g seven and then finishing on the C major 7. And that's, that's a fairly simple 2-5-1 shape. And for some of you that are newer to your 2-5-1s, this is a really good place to start. And for so, those of you who need a bit of a refresher, that's a really good place to start. So let me do the same thing in the key of B flat major, going down a tone, because I get a nice change here. So I'm going to have C minor 7, the same shape. F7, dropping the top two notes. And then B flat major seven. All right, let's uh, let's repeat that again. Two five one in the key of C, and then two five one in the key of B flat major. And let's maybe do a two five one in the key of A flat major, going down another tone. And again, I'm using that same shape. I'm starting the two uh, as a root chord. And then I'm just dropping the top two notes to make it the E flat seven in this case, the chord five, and then finishing on the chord one with the seventh thrown in. So that's a sort of, uh, I've just done that in three different keys there. And that's not a particularly, um, uh, what's, you know, advanced voicing or anything. It's just a nice refresher voicing, a nice starting point. And a really useful one to do for those of you who are newer to jazz piano as well. Okay, let's try some. Um, let's try something more adventurous then. So I think the first one we might start with is something a little bit, uh, something that moves up a little bit. So for instance, with that D minor, if I'm playing the D in the bass, and I've got the D minor seven chord here in the right hand. Let's just take the right hand up a third. So now I've got D, F, A, C, and E. So this creates a D minor 9 chord, which has got a quite a nice sound to it. And if I then, to get to the chord 5, just drop the middle note, I get a really nice shape here. So let's look a bit closely at that. What was I doing just there? I had a D minor 9. And this is almost like what you would describe as a 13th chord and then move into the C major 9. It's a really nice shape there, isn't it? 
So I had the first shape, which was this, and the second shape is this. So, the, again, I'm not really thinking of theory when I do this. I'm just thinking of the shape and just starting away from the root note just gives me more scope to add more colour to the chord. And, of course, I can do this in the other keys now. So there are some really delicious shapes to play around with. And another variation that might be nice, there's, by the way, tons and tons of variations. I'm going to show you how to make up your own variation. So that's not just a textbook exercise of here's variation one, two, three, four, and five, and so on, because that's not really going to help your jazz piano. But here's another variation just to show you before I show you how to create your own variations and, and, uh, and have some control over your own playing and own musical choices. This is just a, a nice variation on the first one we did. did here, instead of going to a standard G7, I substituted that G with a, a G sharp. And I get this effect. And this is a flat ninth chord as a result of that. I've turned the G7 into a flat ninth chord. That has a nice spice to it. You can do it in the other keys as well. Of course, I can modify the chord one as well. I could do something like this. So I got the chord one, the C major seven, and I just flattened that fifth note. This creates a little bit of what I call stardust to the progression. So that's quite fun. So how do we create our own shapes then? Well, there's a few things we can do to start generating our own shapes with the 251. Remember, the 251 progression generally, with exceptions to the decorations we can add, is generally diatonic. It generally stays within the set key of its 251. So we can start to stack notes together in the scale to create our own shapes. So let's say we've got a C major scale. That's pretty easy to remember, right? It's just all white keys. Very easy. So I've got the 2 5 one in the bass here, and I might even use my left hand here. I'm going to stack up notes in the C major scale to decorate the 2 5 one I'm not really thinking of chords here, truth be told. I'm just thinking of the notes in the C major scale. And probably another principle I'm thinking about here is, is keeping my voices quite close together, the voicing quite close. If it's not close together, if it's stretched out like this, it's a little riskier. It can still work very nicely, by the way, but close voicing is a safe bet when you try to improvise your voicing by stacking the notes in the scale. And of course, you can use dissonance, and a particularly useful dissonance to use is by flattening the sixth and seventh note of the major scale. See, so my top voicing went like that. And that somewhat references the minor key. It's like I'm combining C minor and C major at the same time. So that's a nice little, I guess, violation of the major key we can use to create extra dissonance. And we can do this in other keys as well. that we were 
playing around with, or Sharp and Forth, you could also call it, we were playing around with earlier. So this is a way that you can create your own 251 shapes. I call this chord stacking. And it's a really useful um, way to create your own voicings on the piano. So remember, it's important to keep experimenting, keep trying new things. And again, if you need a little bit of help and you're struggling, I really strongly recommend you head over to our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com, and we'll send you a free copy with your request of the Holy Trinity of Jazz Chords. And that's a really important practice resource that we have where we categorize three important jazz chords. And uh, yeah, we really help you uh, clarify uh, where it is you're up to. So I wish you the best with your 251 practice and uh, let us know how you're getting on. Drop us a comment, click subscribe to our channel and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. If you are interested in the London Contemporary School of Piano 30-day jazz musician online course, which will absolutely transform your jazz piano skills in just 30 days, all you have to do to get a test drive of the course free of charge for just five days is to visit our website contemporaryschoolofpiano.com and drop us an email or get in touch with us and ask us about this offer. Ask us about the opportunity of joining the 30-day jazz musician course for a five-day test drive and you won't look back on your playing. Look forward to speaking with you soon and seeing you on the other side. Just drop us an email, visit our website contemporary school of piano.com